Hi guys. Today, so this is chapter three on um, practice test part two, and this, um, this is part of college algebra practice exam. So let's begin. So in questions number one through two, use long or synthetic division. So the first problem says we have to divide 6x cubed plus 10x squared plus x plus 8 divided by 2x squared plus 1. So I will give you, this is, I'll give you a review. So this is, this long thing is called the dividend. Oh wait, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use long division. The reason why I'm going to use long division versus synthetic division is because the divisor, the one that you divide, we call this the divisor, divisor is actually not linear. Notice that this has a square, so you can only use synthetic division if your divisor is linear. So in this case, we can't use it because, so we're going to use long division. And then we call this, we call this the dividend. So how you do long division, how you set up the long division is you do the box thing, right? And we call, we put the, whatever we call, we put the dividend inside the box. So the dividend is what's inside the box. So in this case, it's this whole thing, the six X cubed plus 10 X squared. And then outside we use the divide, we put the divisor. So outside is the divisor. So in our case, it would be the two X plus one, right? And then our answer is called the quotient. Okay. Okay, so um, we can actually, so let's set it up. So yes, do the box. So our divisor is 2x, 2x squared plus 1, okay? Now, this is really important. When you put the dividend, I'm going to put an asterisk. It says make sure dividend is in order. Dividend is in order. So there, there must be no missing degrees. So what I mean, no missing degrees or an order. Is look at our dividend. We have six x cubed plus ten x squared plus x plus one. Notice that the degree is. Is there any missing degrees? So our highest is three. Our second one is two. Then then it's one, and then eight actually has a degree of zero, right? So it's in order. There's no missing degrees. If it was missing, make sure you just replace the zero with wherever the missing degree is. So, but we don't have to because it's ready in order. So go ahead and write it down. 6x cubed plus 10x squared plus x plus 8. Okay, so how you do this is really simple. We got, I want to um, get rid of this 6x cubed. So I'm going to multi, so I got to find a multi. I'm going to multiply number. So there's two things we have to multiply, the 2x squared and the 1. So I'm going to use 3x. The reason why I'm going to use 3x, because I'm going to multiply 3x by this term and as well as the 1. So what is 3x times 2x squared? That is 6x cubed, right? Because 3 times 2 is 6. And then when you're multiplying degrees, you add them. So that's how you got x cubed. And I'm going to put it where I'm going to put the 3x uh, above the x. So I'm going to put the 3x here. I'm not going to put it here. I'm going to put it where the x is. Now, OK, so you're going to multiply 3x by 2x squared. And we said that that was 6x cubed. And then you also have to multiply 3x with the 1, right? 3x times 1. That's exactly 3x. So I'm going to put a positive 3x because it is positive. 
whoops, hold on, I made a mistake. Okay, so you notice that look here, the 3x doesn't go with the tnx, it goes actually over here. So I should have put the 3x right by the x, right? So let me erase that. Okay, so yeah, you make sure it's in order because the 3x does not go with the 10x squares. So it actually goes with the x. So you're gonna put the 3x right here. And then where we don't have an x square. So what do you do? You put a zero. So you could put a plus zero or just a zero. And then this 3x is positive, so put 3x. Okay, close it, parentheses. Then what you do is just distribute a negative. So you kind of have to do this in your head. What is 6x cubed minus 6x cubed? Zero, right? It cancels. So do you see why I use positive 3x instead of negative 3x? If I use negative 3x, it, this 6x cubed wouldn't cancel. You want things to cancel, right? So that's why I use positive 3x. Okay, now what is 10x squared minus zero? It's just 10x squared, right? So put a 10x squared down here. Now, what is an x minus, remember we have to FOIL this negative, so what's an x? minus 3x. You kind of have to do it in your head. So x minus 3x is negative 2x. So put down a negative 2x. Good. Then you could bring down the 8, right? And it's a positive 8. Now what do you think we have to multiply next to get rid of this, our first term, 10x squared? I will use positive 5. So I'm going to put a plus 5 right here. So you got to multiply five with two terms, this term and this term. So what is five times 10 X squared? Whoops, it's not 10 X squared minus two X squared, right? So what is five times two X squared? It's exactly 10 X squared. Put a 10x square right here. Okay. Now, what is, we have to multiply five with the one. So, what is five times one? It's exactly positive five. So, where am I going to put that five? I'm not going to put it down here because there's an x, but I would put it with the whole numbers. So, I'll put it right here. I'm going to put it plus five. And then, since we didn't have a regular x, I'm just going to put a zero or a plus zero. Close it with the parentheses then you distribute a negative. So this is where you kind of have to do it in your head. What is 10x squared minus 10x squared? Zero, so it cancels. What is negative 2x minus zero? It's still technically negative, te negative 2x. And then what is positive eight? And then you have to boil this negative, so it's eight minus five. What is that gonna be? Positive three, so put it plus three. Okay, so that's the end, but um, do you see this negative 2x plus 3? This is what's called our remainder. So we do have a remainder, so that means this, this 2x squared isn't divisible because you have a remainder. It's not a factor. So, I mean, yeah, 2x squared plus 1 is not a factor because we don't, we have a remainder. So how we write our final answer is really simple. Our final answer is you put the quotient to so our quotient. Remember, this the answer is the quotient, so it's 3x plus 5. Then it's the room plus the remainder. So our remainder is negative 2x plus 3. So put you can put negative 2x plus 3 over the, the divisor, right? Our divisor is 2x squared plus 1. So it's over 2x squared plus 1. And then you could put a plus 1 if you want here, plus, and then put a parentheses if you want to. Okay. Or you could just leave it as negative 2x plus 3 divided by 2x squared plus 1. Simple, right? Let's do number 2. 
same rules, the same direction, used long division or synthetic division. So this one, I won't actually do long division. I will actually use synthetic. And the reason why I'm going to use synthetic is look at the um, divisor, or the one we're dividing. So look at, at the x minus 6. Notice it is linear, right? If you were to graph this, this is linear. Or this has a degree 1. So we know it's linear. And then we're not going to, OK, so how I do this is I'm going to put a box. So we're doing synthetic. But I am not going to, in this box, we put the divisor, right? But it's I'm not going to use x minus 6. I'm actually going to use positive 6. It's the zeros of this, right? The zeros of x minus 6. And what I mean by zeros is you can set x minus 6, set that to 0. And when you solve for 6, it's x equals 6. So that's why it's positive 6. You, some people think of it's always the opposite of whatever this is. So in our case, it would be positive 6. OK, so now what I'm going to do is the dividend. We're going to rewrite the dividend. So that is our dividend, right? Now, it's not in order, actually. And there's actually things are missing. So it actually starts out with negative x fourth, And then you have a positive 180x. You can write that as that. But notice that now you got to check if it's in order. Notice that we are missing degrees. We're missing a cube, square, and a 0. So what I mean is how I make sure it's order. So it's like saying our highest degree is negative x to the fourth. We don't have an x cubed, so we could put 0 x cubed. We don't have a square, so you could put a 0 x square. We have an x, this one, so you could put 180x. 180x. And then we don't have a whole number, so you could just, or a degree of 0. We don't have that, so we just put a 0. OK. But instead of putting this whole thing, we only care about the coefficient. Wait, so this is an order, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0, right? It's an order. But we're not. We're going to only care about the coefficient of the degrees. So this has a coefficient of negative 1. This has a coefficient of 0. This has a coefficient of 0. This has a coefficient of 180. And this has a coefficient of 0. So we only care about the coefficient. So the first one. Our highest degree is has a coefficient of negative one. Then our cubed has a coefficient of zero. Our square has a coefficient of zero. Our first power has a coefficient of 180. And then our last power or zero power has a coefficient of zero. So that's what I mean by writing things in order. Okay, you can put a line under. The first, some people, okay, the first step is put a placeholder of zero on the first one, so of negative one. So, or some people always remember you could just bring down the negative one, the first term. I always put a placeholder just in case because I do kind of get confused. So, now what you do is do negative one plus zero, which is still technically negative, negative one. So, now you do negative one times six. What is that going to be? Negative six, right? So yeah, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Let me write that down. Negative 1 times positive 6 is negative 6. Good. So what's negative 6 plus 0? Negative 6. Negative 6 times positive 6 is negative 36. Negative 36 plus 0 is negative 36. Good. Negative 36 times positive 6 is Exactly, negative 2, 1, 6, right? And then 180 plus negative 2, 1, 6 is negative 36. And then negative 36 times positive 6 is negative 2, 1, 6. Good. So, and then 0 plus negative 2, 1, 6 is exactly negative 2, 1, 6. Since this is not, the outcome is not a 0, that negative 2, 1, 6 is our remainder. Okay, not done. We're almost there, but we got now we got to write our final equation or our answers. So 
So do you see these numbers, negative 1, negative 6, negative 36, negative 36, and then negative 216? These are, new, these are our new coefficient. Our new coefficient. Now, we have to write a degree. Remember, the coefficient has a degree with it. So, OK, so how our new degree is going to be one less from the original degree. So what I mean by one less, so go back to your original problem, this problem. Notice the highest degree was the four. So now we're going to start with a degree of three, because it's always one less from the highest original degree. And then these are new coefficients. So how I write it is like this. Right. So our, high, our next degree is going to be x cubed. And then it has a coefficient of negative one. Right. And then you just keep going down. So our next coefficient is negative six. And then you, our degree just keeps on going down. So what's one less of three? Square. So it's x squared. And our next coefficient is negative 36. And then our next degree is x, right? Three, two, one. And then that negative. Wait, so this one, this one, this one. Did I write it more than once? No. And then it's going to be this negative 36. Remember, it has a degree of 0. So it's like saying negative 36, x to the 0. But anything to the 0 is just 1. So it's just negative 36. And then this remain, this negative 2, 1, 6 is a remainder. So how you write the remainder is you put the remainder, which is negative 2, 1, 6, divided by the, the um, Dividend divisor, right? The one that we're dividing. So we're not going to put six. We're actually going to put it at x minus six, like that. So this is your final answer, right? So just remember, when you you can only use synthetic division if your divide our divisor is linear or has a degree of one. So in this case. This has a degree one. Um, the one why see do you see the difference? We couldn't use we could we had to use long division because this one the div divisor is not linear. It has a degree of, degree of two. So I hope that kind of understand about. I hope this understand helps a lot. Okay, and so number three says simplify the rational expression. So you're dividing, right? We have 4x cubed minus x squared plus x divided by 3 divided by 2x minus 3. Now, this is, they doesn't tell you which um, way you have to, you have to figure it out. There's actually, um, you can actually do long division. You could actually use both techniques, long division or synthetic division. Look, the 2x minus 3 is technically linear because this has a degree 1. And if you were to solve that, set that to 0, you would add 3. Add 3. 2x equals 3 divided by 2 divided by 2. x equals 3 halves. So you would do the box 3 halves, right? And then do the quote, the, the, um, the quotient, the, um, the coefficient. but the reason why I'm not going to do synthetic division, which you can, is because it has this has a this is a fraction, right? And I don't like doing fractions. I just don't like. I'm just really lazy, and I like doing the easiest, fastest, most efficient way. So I'm going to use long. Um, I'm going to use long. Div, uh, I'm going to use the uh, synthetic. I mean, um, long division. I'm going to use long division because I don't want to deal with fractions. So let's do the box. So outside the box, I always get this confused. The um, the divide the divisor. This is called a divisor. So our divisor is this, and then this is called the dividend. So put the outside the divisor outside the box. So it's two x minus three. And then put the dividend inside the box. But before you do that, you have to make sure every the degrees are in order. So we have a three here, two here, one here, and zero here. So everything is order. We don't have to put it any zeros. 
And then you just write it out, 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus x plus 3. Okay, so now we got, I want to get, our goal is to get rid of this 4x cubed. So I'm, what number will I use? I will use um, 2x squared. Right, because if you do, you got it, if I use 2x squared, I'm going to multiply this with this, 2x squared with this and this. So if I multiply 2x squared put times 2x, what do I get? 4x cubed. And I want to get rid of this 4x cubed. So I'm going to put the 2x squared right here. Not here, but where the x squared is. So what is 2x squared times 2x? We just said it, 4x cubed. So put a 4x cubed. Now we have to multiply the 2x squared with the negative 3. So what is 2x squared times negative 3? Negative 6x squared. So it goes right below the x squared. And then close it with the parentheses. And then distribute a negative. And then you kind of have to do it in your head. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed, they cancel. Now this one, to foil it out a negative, so what's a negative times a negative? Positive, so this becomes a positive. So what's positive 6x squared minus x squared? Your outcome is a negative 2x squared. Good, bring down that x plus x. Now we need a number to get, I want, what am I gonna multiply to get rid of this 2x squared? So I will use, what will I use? I will use a negative x. I will put that negative x right here, right above the x. So what is 2x times negative x, right? 2x, 2x times negative x. That gives me negative 2x squared. So this is going to be negative 2x squared. Now you're probably thinking, well, this doesn't cancel out. Remember, we have to boil out a negative, so it will cancel out. So that's why I use a negative x, not a positive x. Okay, so negative x times negative, negative x times negative three, what is that gonna be? Two negatives becomes positive, so that becomes three x. Let's put a three x right here. Put a parentheses, and then you can foil out a negative. So kind of do this in your head. Negative, negative times a negative is a positive two x, and then a positive two x, with a negative 2x, what happens here? Cancels. And then negative, foil out that negative, negative, what's a negative 3x plus x? Negative 2x. Put a negative 2x here, and then bring down that positive 3, so plus 3. Almost there. Now our next term is, what am I gonna use? I will use, I wanna get rid of this negative two x, so I'm gonna multiply everything by negative one. So multiply it with negative one times two, positive two x, that's negative two x. So this is gonna be a negative two x. Notice why, you know, see why I didn't use positive one? Because when you foil out a negative, it wouldn't cancel. So that's why I use a negative one. So you kind of have to like think about it and figure out, you kind of have to manipulate it. Okay, so what's negative one times negative three? Positive three, so put a positive three. Then foil out that negative. So negative times a negative is a positive two x, and then you have a negative two x, cancels. And then you have a, this foil out this negative, so you have negative three plus three, that becomes a zero because it cancels. So you have a no remainder. So when you meet, so when you have a no remainder, that means that two x minus three is a factor. Two x minus three is a factor. So your final answer is this: two x square, two x square minus x. Oh, that was awful. Let me erase it. two x squared minus x minus one. There's no remainder, so this is just final answer. Simple, right? Okay. Let's move on to number four.
Okay, so it's, I, I think we did something like this in our previous, previous chapter, previous practice exam. So it says find a polynomial function that has the given zeros. There are many correct answers. So we got to find an equation for this polynomial and they give us our zeros. So notice, okay, so when you FOIL this out, what is my highest degree? Since we have three, one, two, three, exactly three zeros, that means our, we have, our highest degree is gonna be an X cubed. So let's find out our answer, our um, equation. So F of X equals, notice that, let's start with the negative three. How do we write our um, equation? Notice this is negative three. So it should, our factor should have been X plus three, because remember, if you set that to zero and you solve for X, it's x equals negative three. So that's why it's just x plus three, not positive three. I mean negative three, so it's x plus three. Look, okay, now go look at our one plus square root of two and a one minus two. Remember this is, they're pretty much conjugate, so you're gonna use the conjugate pair theorem. Conjugate pair theorem. So when you set this up, it's a little bit different. So when it's gonna be bracket, and then it's going to be x minus our first conjugate, which is, so this is, so this is how you set it up for, only, it's only applies for our conjugate pair theorems. So it's x minus, and then it's plus our first conjugate. So it's one plus square root of two, parentheses, bracket, and then bracket x minus, and then it's the second conjugate. So it's one, one minus square root of two parentheses and then bracket. Okay, so let's simplify things. Let's just focus on this, the conjugate. So let's FOIL out this negative. So when you FOIL out that negative, it's gonna be X minus one, and then minus square root of two, bracket. And then when you FOIL out this negative, it's gonna be X minus one plus square root of two bracket, and then please don't forget the x plus three. Okay, now let's, before we do any more simplifying, look at, look at it very closely. We have an x minus one here. We have the same x minus one, and then we have a neg negative square root of two and a positive square root of two. That looks like a special identity, and that identity is called the perfect square. So we have an a plus b, this is the perfect square, a plus b, a minus b, equals a square minus b square, right? So it does look like this. What does it look? Does it look like the right side? Does this right here look like the right side or left side? Um, I'm going to say the left side, right? It looks like this. Now, that means we have to make it look like this. So first, we got to figure out our a. So my a is the one that repeats more than one, so it's just x minus one. And my b is what? Just radical two, right? Not minus radical two, it's just radical two. So we gotta do the eight, now we gotta make it look like a squared minus b squared. So let me go Let's see, can I make it? Yeah, let's put a little further on the left. I'm gonna make it, because I need more space. So it's gonna be f of x equals, don't forget the x plus three, so put x plus three. And then it's bracket. And we're gonna make it look like a squared minus b squared. And we said that our a is x minus one. So it's x minus one square minus b squared. And we know our b is radical, I'll put a parenthesis, radical two square and then bracket. Let's do some algebra. So when you FOIL this out, this is going to be x squared minus 2x plus one, right? When you FOIL it out. And then it's going to be a minus. And what is, when you square radical, what happens? The radical disappears, so it's just two. So it's a minus two bracket. 
and then it's x plus three. Let's do some, some, let's clean this up a little bit. So it's gonna be x plus three, and then bracket. When you clean, when you combine like terms, x, so when you combine like terms, it's gonna be x squared minus two x minus one bracket and we're almost there just one more let one more step you gotta foil this out you gotta foil everything out this this and this and when you foil everything out you're gonna get x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 3x squared minus 6x minus 3 so yeah you could have pressed pause and then just do the work but I, I'll do it for you and then when you combine like terms, our, so our final equation, when you combine like terms, is gonna be x cubed, yeah, plus x squared. So yeah, if I go a little bit too fast, just press pause and try to do it on yourself, by yourself. So x cubed plus x squared minus seven x minus three. So this is the final equation of your polynomial when given these zeros of negative three, one plus square root two, and when one minus x, one minus square root two. Notice, remember how I said x cubed, it's my highest degree, so this is my first term, right? So this is your, your final answer, okay? So let's move, let's do five. So five says write the complex number in standard form. So now we're dealing with imaginaries and we've got to put it in standard form. So if you recall that standard form with imaginary number is in the form of a plus bi. So this is standard form. So we've got to make it look like that. So let's simplify this. This is really simple. So this negative six i, it is, it just stays negative six i. You can't simplify it anymore. And then remember i square. I squared simplifies as negative one, so this will pre replace I squared with negative one. And when you simplify it, remember we have to put it in A plus BI form, so our, we're gonna put that negative one first, so it's gonna be negative one, and then whatever you're left with in I, so we're, our I is a negative six I, so it's negative six I. Okay. That's your final answer. So first term is always the whole numbers, and then whatever your imaginary number is. So in our case, it's just negative six. Okay. That was simple, that was five. Let's do six. It says perform the addition or subtraction and write the result in standard form. So we gotta put in A plus BI form. This is pretty simple. You just, dis we're gonna distribute this negative and then we just combine like terms, right? So foil out that negative. So it's gonna be negative three halves negative five half i, and then it's plus, we didn't do anything, just bringing it down, so it's just plus five thirds plus 11 over three i, right? Now you combine like terms, so let's combine our whole numbers, five thirds and negative three halves. So negative three halves plus five thirds. Um, you know how to add fractions, you need a common denominator. So our common denominator is six, so multiply this by two, and then multiply this by three. So this is negative nine, and then five times two is 10. So that's, uh, what is that gonna be? 10 minus, 10 minus nine is positive one, and then over six. So that's one six. Now we gotta find, combine our i's, we have a negative five i and 11 third i, right? So combine that. So combine negative five halves i plus 11 third i i. Just like adding fraction, you need a common denominator. So our common denominator is six, so multiply this by two. Multiply this by three, top and bottom. So negative five i times three is negative 15 i. And then two times 11i is 22i, so that becomes, wait, did I make a mistake? No, 22i minus 15 is 77. 
and then over 6i. So now we just got to put it in standard form. So we're going to put the 1 6 first. So it's 1 6 plus the i, which is 7 6i. Okay. That's your final answer. Okay, now number seven says perform the operation and write the results in standard form for seven through eight. So let's, now we're actually, now we're not um, adding, we're actually multiplying, but look at it really closely. So we have square root 14 plus square root 10i times square root of 14 minus 10, square root 10i. That looks like an identity that we know of. And that identity is called the perfect square. So before, before you go crazy and like doing the long way, like boiling out one by one and then combining like terms, there's a shortcut, right? The perfect square. So it's a plus b, a minus b equals a square minus b square. So we got to figure out which side does this look like? I mean, this side, does it look like the right or the left? It looks like the left, right? It does. Now we just got to make it look like the right a squared minus b squared, and before that, we just got to figure out our a and our b. So what do you think my a is going to be? I'm going to say my a is going to be square root of 14. And then what do you think my b is? Now be careful, don't include, be careful. It's just square root of 10i, not, not just square root of 10. And it's not negative, it's just square root of 10i. Now put it, make it look like a square minus b squared. So our a is square root of 14. And then you got to square that. And it's minus b squared. So our b is square root of 10. And then the i is outside the radical. And then you have to square that, right? So what is square root of 14 squared? Remember when you square a radical, the radical disappears. So it's just 14 minus, and I'm going to put a bracket because there's two things we got to do. We got to we got to score the radical ten. So what is the what? When you square a root of radical ten, what do you get? Positive ten, and then you also have to square the i. So what's i times i? I squared. So it's times i squared. Now this actually simplifies. That's why I put a bracket because we have to distribute the negative. What is i squared? negative one. So it's like saying 10 times negative one, right? So that's negative 10. And then don't forget, you have to distribute the negative, so it's negative. And then you have a 14. So FOIL out this negative, negative times a negative is positive, right? So it's positive 10. And then bring down the 14. So 14 plus 10 is exactly 24. So our final answer is in standard form, it's just 24, right? Because we don't have an I anymore. It's just 24. Let's do eight. So we have to do some work. Um, we got to do some boiling. 2 plus 3i plus 2 minus 3i square. So when you FOIL this out, there's a um, rule. So when you FOIL 2 plus 3i, you could do it one by one, right? But I already, since I'm a little bit more advanced, there's a, um, I could do this in my head, really. So this is 4 plus, if you can't do this in your head, go ahead and FOIL it the long way, right? FOIL it out. And then so it's going to be, this is going to be 4 plus 12i plus 9i squared. And when you FOIL this out, it's going to be plus 4 minus 12i plus 9i squared. So this should be an i square. So let's simplify it. Um, we're, we'll simplify the i squares. Remember, i squared is negative one. So 
or every single phi square put in negative one. So this is really saying nine times negative one. And over here we have a nine times negative one as well. So when you simplify this part, it's gonna be four plus 12 i, and then nine times negative one is negative nine, parentheses. And then it, this is gonna be parentheses four minus 12 i, and then nine times negative one is negative nine. Now let's simplify this parentheses. So this is gonna be simplified as four plus negative nine is negative five, and then plus the i, so it's just 12 i. And over here, this is gonna be, what's four plus a negative nine? It's negative five, and then bring down your i, which is negative 12 i, right? Almost done. Now we're just gonna put it in standard form. So collect like terms, so we have, okay, so what happens to the i's? We have 12 i and a negative 12, 12 i. That cancels, right? Now we're just left with negative five and a negative five. So your final answer is just negative 10. And this is still technically standard form because we don't have any i's. That was eight, let's do nine. It says write the complex conjugate of the complex number, then multiply its number by its complex conjugate. So we're gonna use the conjugate theorem. So, okay, so over here we have negative one minus square root of five i. So we gotta multiply it by the conjugate. So what is our conjugate gonna be? It's the same thing, but the sign's gonna be plus. So it's gonna be, we're multiplying it by the conjugate. So it's negative one plus square root of five i, okay? Now, you could take the long way and foil out one by one, but I know there's a shortcut. This is called the perfect square. So it's a plus b, a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. We know that this looks like the left, so we gotta make it look like the right. But we got, before you do that, you gotta figure out your a's. My a is just negative one, right? And then my b is square root of five i. So it's a squared minus b squared, so it's gonna be negative one square minus b squared, so it's minus radical five i squared. So what's negative one squared? It's positive one minus, now we gotta do, we gotta square two things, the radical five, so what's radical five squared? It's just five times it by, now you gotta, what is i squared or i times i? It's just i squared. Remember i squared is negative one. So put a, what's five times negative one? It's negative five. And then don't forget this negative as well because you have to FOIL out that negative. So this becomes, two negatives becomes a positive. So it's one plus five, just six. So your final answer is six. So they, want to, they wanted two things. They wanted to know what the conjugate, the conjugate was one, negative one plus square root of five i. And then we got to find out what was your outcome. We said it was just six, and that's in standard form, just six. So that was nine. Let's do 10. Okay, so number 10 says, write the quotient in standard form. So we have six minus five i divided by i. So I know what you're guys thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, multiply it by top and bottom by six plus five i. That's what I would thought would do first, but notice, okay, so you can only do that if it's in the bottom, right? If it was i divided by six minus five, then you can multiply the conjugate six plus five i. 
6 plus 5i. But it's not in that form. So you can actually have to do, you got to kind of manipulate it and you have to use what you know. Remember um, i square gives us negative 1. So if we have an i right here. So if I multiply top and bottom by i, when you multiply this, you get an i squared, which comes out really nicely. So that's why we're going to multiply top and bottom by i instead of 6 plus 5i. So go ahead and multiply this. So what is 6 times i? So that's 6i. And then what's negative 5i times i? negative 5i squared divided by what is i times i, i squared. Good. Let's simplify. Um, that 6i just stays the same. So, and then the negative 5i squared, it's negative 5 because i squared is negative 1. So, put in negative 1 divided by i squared, which is negative 1. So, Let's simplify negative 5i times negative 1 becomes a positive 5. So over here, it's going to be, I'll put the 5 first. So it's positive 5 plus 6i divided by, divided by negative 1. So you're going to divide that negative 1 by both things, the 5 and the 6i. So when you divide that negative 1, you get negative 5 and then minus 6i. And this is in standard form, right? It's in A plus BI form. So this is your final answer. So that was 10. Let's do 11. Okay, so number 11 says perform the operation and write the results in standard form. Okay, so there's a lot of things that we might have to do. Okay, so it's we are actually subtracting frac. You could think of this as subtracting fraction, right? So in order to subtract or add fractions, you gotta have a common denominator. So what do you think our common denominator could be? Common denominator. We have a one plus i and a one minus i. So it's just those two things, right? Our common denominator is just one plus i and then it's one minus i, right? Just like adding and subtracting fractions. So over here, what do we, we, what do we have to multiply top and bottom? So I'll multiply that by one plus i, and then multiply this top by one plus i. And over here, what are we gonna multiply top and bottom? We're gonna multiply that by one minus i, one minus i. So now we gotta do some work. So boil this out. When we foil that out, you get 2 minus 2i. And then don't forget about this. Now when we, I'm going to put a negative, and then I'm going to put a bracket, because now I'm going to foil out this 3. So it's going to be 3 plus 3i bracket divided by the common denominator, which is 1 plus i one minus i, right? Now, let's fix the numerator, let's simplify the numerator, so foil out this negative. So you're gonna get two minus two i minus three minus three i, and then let's simplify the denominator. This is a perfect square, so I know this is going, to, when you do the perfect square, this is gonna be, when you foil it out, you get one minus I square. So let's fix the numerator. When you simplify, so this is going to be a negative three and a two, that's going to be negative one. And then we have a negative two i and a negative three i, so that's negative five i. And then over here, we have a one minus i square. We remember that i square is negative one, so it's minus a minus one. And then two negatives becomes a positive. So it's like saying one plus one is two. So it's just two here. Now, you gotta divide that two by two things, the negative one and the negative five. So negative one divided by two is negative one half. 
and then negative five i divided by two is negative five half i. Okay, this is your final answer in standard form. That was 11, let's do 12. Question says, use the quadratic formula to solve the quadratic equation. So this doesn't factor out well, so that's why you have to use the quadratic formula. So we have 4x squared plus 16x plus 7. Um, if you recall, okay, so first we've got to figure out our A and our B and our C. So our A is 4, my B is 16, and then my C is 17. If you recall that the quadratic formula is x equals plus or minus, whoops, x equals plus or minus opposite of B. It's x equals opposite B plus or minus root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we know our A and our B and our C, so we just got to plug it in. So x equals opposite of B is negative 16 plus or minus. Um, I'm going to do this, put this in the calculator. Um, what is B squared? Is 256. Yeah, so if I go too fast, go ahead and press pause minus four times AC, so it's minus four times 17, all over 2A. And 2A is four. When you simplify this, this is gonna be negative 16 plus or minus. When you do all this work, 256 minus this whole thing, you get square root of negative 16 over eight. Okay, so you can, Look at the, you can never have a negative inside the radical. So what you can do is, when you have a negative um, inside the radical, you could put it, you could replace that, you could put um, an I in front of the radical and that'll get, that'll replace the negative. So what I mean is, it's gonna be X negative 16 plus or minus, and then this becomes an I, and then that becomes a 16. Now you can do it, right? So when I'm factoring out an I, to replace that negative. And then it's all over eight. So when you simplify this, it's gonna be, okay, so what is i times square root of 16? It's just four i, so, and then you have a plus or minus, so you have two answers. So it's gonna be x equals negative 16 plus or minus four i over eight. So you're going to get two answers, remember? You're going to get, when you, do, when you simplify this, this is going to get x equals negative 2 plus 1 half i. And then our other answer is going to be, whoops, yeah, negative 2 minus 1 half square root of i. your final answer. Okay, that was 12. So, and I think 13 is our last one. So, good. So, 13 says simplify the complex number and write it in standard form. So, let's use what we know. So, this i cubed, we can simplify as negative 6 times i times it by i squared, right? Because i squared times i is i cubed. And then plus i squared. We know that i squared is negative 1. So it's negative 6 times i times negative 1, right? Plus i squared, so i squared is still technically negative 1. Simplify this. When you multiply this, you get two negatives negative six times negative one is positive six, and then you have an i, and then your leftover is just negative one. So this, in standard form, you're gonna put the whole number first, so it's gonna be negative one plus the imaginary number, so it's six i. So that's your final answer. So this was part two of chapter three practice exam, and that wraps it up for today.